So for verse and devotion uh, today, I just finished my lesson with the kids and I'd been going over with them the similarities and the differences between the crucifixion and resurrection of the Gospels for, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and how the different writers had different perspectives on each, in each book, okay? And in the, in the book of Luke, chapter 24, <clears throat> Jesus has risen from the tomb, okay? He's, he's alive, and he literally is out talking to the disciples, but they don't have a clue that it's him, <laughs> okay? And in verse 36 of chapter 24, he says, it says here, Jesus appears to the disciples. He says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you doubt, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? <laughs> they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. <sighs> I think, I mean, there's, there's umpteen miracles here. You know, from the moment they took him to be crucified to the time he, you know, is risen again. But the fact that he ate with them and they watched him. I mean, yeah, okay, they're looking at his hands and his feet, but he ate. He physically ate food in front of them. I mean, how much more proof did they need that he was real? It's like, you know, touching him, you know, just, I mean, he, his guts were in there. He had a piece of broiled fish. And to me, that's just, it's crazy, but it's super cool because it was undeniable proof that they needed and it's written here and it's undeniable proof that he's alive and that he's real and that he did what he did for us. And if you read down, it goes down to the end here. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that it is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He helped them understand. I pray that he does that for us. I pray he does that for me. I did that when I was 15 years old. I didn't get it. I didn't understand the scriptures. And all I did was ask for help. I asked God to help me, and he did. It changed my life, and it, and it can happen for you too. He told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Verse 47, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And that's talking about the Holy Spirit. But I want to go back to verse 47. It says, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. We have to repent. This time that we've went through will be lost if we don't repent of what sins we have committed. I implore you that if there are things in your life that you need to get straightened out with God, this is the time to do it. Repent and ask for forgiveness and don't go back. And remember that he did all of this for you. He did all of this for me. He did all of it for the people that crucified him. He did it for the people that nailed him to that tree. He did it for every single one of us. And we, I'm not perfect, but I tell you what, I absolutely owe him my repentance. I'm sorry for the things that I've done. And I want to make sure that I'm right. And I pray that you do too. So just don't forget that in all of this, make sure you have taken time and truly repent. That's the kicker here. I believe that's the key. We've got to have pure hearts for Jesus now.